Okay, I'm doing it. Making a calculator in PyCharm with Docker and unit test. Okay, so I'm going to assume everyone already has PyCharm and Docker installed. But to get PyCharm, all you got to do is head to JetBrains website, make an account, get the student license, and then download it. Self-explanatory. Uh, Docker, I just want to download Docker Desktop. There could be some issues, um, but I'm not going to talk about those right now because there's a there's a lot of them. <laughs> I don't want I don't want to deal with. Okay. So uh, once you got that all set up, just make a new project in PyCharm, and these are all the files that are going to be in my um, calculator. Uh, most of them are blank, so it'll be fun. We'll do it like together, almost like a Never mind. But, um, except Docker. Yeah, the Docker file is important, but I'll get to that in a second. So, as soon as you open up PyCharm, what you want to do is connect it to Docker. So, what you got to do is head to your settings and head to build execution deployment, hit Docker, and make sure TCP socket is checked off. And it says connection successful. Sometimes it doesn't say that, sometimes it just doesn't connect. Um, there are a lot of issues that I quite don't quite know the solutions to, but re literally restarting your computer helps sometimes, most a lot of the time. Okay, and then after that's checked off, I'm going to head to Docker Desktop, Settings, and make sure this box is also checked off, Expose Daemon, you know what I mean. But uh, yeah, after that, then you should be down ready to actually use Docker. So after that, you want to add a configuration. Click plus right here, head to Docker, and then click Docker file. But you didn't make one of those yet, did you? So, Docker file. You can make a file, file, new, new file. Literally call it Docker file. And then you're gonna want to put this this code in. So what it's doing is it's saying it's getting stuff from Python 3.7, which is the version of Python that I'm using at least. And it's gonna run pip install, which is what Python's built-in thingy to um, download third-party modules. And it's using that to download everything in requirements.txt but I don't got nothing there yet. So, after all that's done, after you've got all this code in your Docker file, what you want to do is go back, add configuration, Docker, Docker file, Docker file, Docker file. <laughs> nice. And you get the OK. And now there's a play button, which means you can now make containers, which is what Docker does. See, everything right here is um, your containers. And as you can see, it didn't work because I don't have anything in required. I don't have anything. Yeah. Okay. So now, on that set up, let's go to the calculator. So the first thing you want to do is create a calculator. Now in CS100, you feel a lot more just making functions and doing stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. But right now we're applying more the CS113 stuff, like the object-oriented programming with encapsulation. You know, you know what I mean. And then after you make the class, the first thing you want to do, it, oops, the first thing you want to do you gotta make a f an init function, which is basically creating the calculator, as in, in the sense that like the object now exists. Remember, it's double underscore. So this function just says, "Let's make a calculator object," and then it does that. Okay, also Python interpreter, what you want to do is add interpreter, make sure it's your version of Python. It's 
basically telling the container what version of Python it's using and so it's not confused. Okay, now that object exists, let's go on to the functions. So, really self-explanatory. You can addition class, static method, because it's a static method, and then we're just making simple function, two parameters, guess what it's going to do, it's going to add two numbers. So yeah, now that you have one function, what you want to do now is make a test for it to make sure it works. You don't want to keep doing stuff and then realize that it's wrong like an hour later. So you have to redo so much stuff. So the thing with unit tests is you need three things in your test file. A, you need to import unit test. B, you need a class for the unit test. And C, you need this thing. Nope, not in the class. But yeah. So now you um what the heck? Now you just write your um test function. So since we're testing addition, guess what we're naming it? Test addition and the parameter is self. And if that wasn't clear what self was in 113 or whatever, self is basically saying it's calling itself like there's a class, it's calling itself as a class, if that makes sense. Okay. So you could do one line, two line. I'll do it two line so it's easy to understand at first. So making a result that's equal to Okay, so what do you mean? One sec. <laughs> right. Okay, I'm, I'm a fool. I was a fool. So, what it's doing is taking the addition from that and finding the sum of one and two. So, now what you want to do is self dot cert equal three result. So what it's doing is it's taking result, which is the sum of these two, and then making sure it's equal to this. And then if it is equal, then the test is going to pass when you run Docker. It's going to say it's going to give you the OK. If it's not, it's going to fail you. So let's run Docker right now. Run Docker. Okay, there's nothing in requirements.txt. So I'm just going to get rid of it for now because it's messing stuff up. Okay, maybe, maybe, okay, hold on one second. Okay, I was a fool. Uh, the problem was in my Docker file. So instead of saying add, before it said add calculator, nah, it's supposed to say add dot space dot. And then now if we run it, I said now if we run it, 
Bam, the one test we have, it passes. So, now you could, now I guess we're gonna do this for the rest of the operation. So, I'll do that right now, and I'll come back. Okay, so I finished all the functions, except mean, we're gonna do that together. Um, so all of them has fancy words, but that doesn't matter, it's just a parameter, you can make it whatever you want. And same with the test, uh, instead of using two lines, it made it one line. So that it's easier to, I guess, write, I don't know. One line, one's better than two. If you see all the tests pass, so now we're going to do mean. So you can do that thing where you just add and then divide everything. Or you could just use NumPy, um, whatever floats from both. But I'm using NumPy to, it's for the example, it's an example, it's a Docker thing. I'm going to write the static method. So it's going to take a list of data, and that's, it's going to take the mean of that. Instead of doing a bunch of numbers. So what this is going to do is it's going to take, it's literally NumPy, like it's just doing what NumPy wants it to do. So, let's write a test for that. So the mean has to be 4, so you know that how it is. You know how it is. You know, I should have made a test fail so that you could see what happens when it fails. But I, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe you could, you could see it yourself. You know what I mean? We're all learning here. It's okay to fail could get back up. Oh look, speaking of fail. So if you look at this, um, oh shoot, I messed up the code. I forgot to import it. Oh no, I missed so much. Now it should theoretically work, right? You know how you're using NumPy? I don't got NumPy installed on my computer. So what do you think is going to happen? It's going to pass? No, because you can't use NumPy. Because I don't have it. Okay, wait, actually I just ruined my whole demonstration. Okay, so I don't have NumPy installed on my computer, as I said. So, it theoretically should fail the test, but using Docker, it's still fit. Using Docker, you're able to, remember how I said it downloads everything in requirements.txt? Well, it's downloading NumPy right now to make the test pass. Let's say I got rid of this, I would fail the test. But again, it's, it's how containers are. What Docker is doing is it's creating a container with everything it needs to download. And since I need NumPy, it's creating a, creating a container with NumPy. And look how it fails because it's look, no NumPy. So now we know it works. All that's left to do is deal with the calculator itself. So what we got to do is we just gotta import all the math into this so that the calculator could do as like the ability to do the math and then we test we make tests to make sure that the calculator uses uses the functions properly so it's, I'll just do that 
Okay, so I got everything done. Um, all the tests passed. Everything's done. Uh, so yeah. So the key of this program, everything's relatively simple, like the math and actually writing it. But it's a good use of Docker for someone like me or anyone who is relatively new to Docker. Doesn't really know what it does. And also unit tests are really useful. So. I uh, hope you learned a lot, or at least something. Um, happy quarantining.